The following is a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society. Election, Chosen, Israel, the Church. Some of the words we'll be talking about today as we try to explain biblical election. This is Grace in Focus. Glad you've joined us. It is the radio broadcast and podcast ministry of the Grace Evangelical Society. We are a free grace organization, and you can find out more about us at our website, faithalone.org. We have our national conference coming up May the 20th through the 23rd, and you are invited. It is at a beautiful camp in North Texas, Camp Copus, and you can find out information and registration details at our website, faithalone.org. Now with today's question and answer discussion, here are Bob Wilkin and Ken Yates. I'm telling you, these questions here that these listeners send in, they're just uh, so outstanding. And we have one right here, and this is from Bob. He admits in this email that he is an ex-Calvinist. And he goes, there's no way you can be a Calvinist and study the scriptures, which we would say amen to that. And he specifically deals in this question with the Calvinist understanding of election. election. But then he says, but God does elect. right? And he goes, it's clear the verses that election does exist. And he says, well, how do we explain it in a non-Calvinistic way where we go down that path where the Calvinist says, well, God's elected you. So even if you believe, if he didn't elect you, it doesn't matter. Or if you're not elect, according to the Calvinist, if you believe, it doesn't matter because you're not of the elect uh, right. or whatever. He goes, so how would you explain that in a non-Calvinistic way? And the reason I'm asking you is because I know you've done more work on this than I have. I mean, I have my ideas, but I'm going to turn it over to you for a minute. Okay. Well, the key to any understanding any word in the Bible is to study its use in the Bible. Right. Not to study its use in English literature or in ancient literature or in theology books or even in books that were before the, the New Testament or immediately after the New Testament. We want to know How are the words for election used in the New Testament as well as in the Old Testament? But since this biblical doctrine of election is typically thought of as a New Testament doctrine, we focus a lot there. But I think it's a mistake to be exclusively there. For example, Israel is God's chosen people. God's elect people. Uh, God's elect people. In fact, in Matthew 24, 22... Calvinists are going to misunderstand that verse because, first of all, they believe in replacement theology, that the church replaces Israel. So God's done with Israel, so right. Right. But secondly, when they see the word elect, they just jump all over it and think it's talking about those who are chosen by God for eternal life, which there are no such people because God doesn't choose for eternal life. But Matthew 24 22 is where the Lord Jesus says, if those days were not cut short, the days of the tribulation, no flesh would be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days were cut short. Well, the elect there refers to Israel because God made promises to Israel that haven't been fulfilled yet. And let me just say something about that as well. The, The saved, as you know, in that verse is not salvation from the lake of fire. Exactly. It's physical survival. Right. So whoever these elect are in that verse is not talking about, okay, No one would go to heaven except for the elect, they'll go, which is twisting that scripture both forward and backwards. Okay, I would say to Bob, look, there are some places in the New Testament where we see the word elect, and the context doesn't tell us anything about what this person or group is elect for. But there are lots of places where we know what people were chosen or elect for. For example, the city of Jerusalem is chosen and has been chosen by God. And that's repeated all through the Old and New Testament, that Jerusalem is a chosen city. It's the chosen place where people are to worship, where the temple is to be. You also have the 12 apostles. Jesus chose 12. Including Judas. Including Judas. He elected Judas. Judas is one of the elect. Of course, Judas's place was taken by Matthias. In Acts chapter 1, they cast lots so they could find out who would take Judas's place. So Matthias was chosen 
Jesus was chosen. Matthias to die. was chosen, by the way, as an apostle after he already had eternal life. <laughs> oh, yeah. All of them. Sure. Except for Judas, of course. And you have Jesus was chosen to die on the cross for our sins. There are scriptures that talk about him being the chosen Messiah. And there are references to the fact that Jews and Gentiles were chosen in him to be one body called the church. I think that's what Ephesians 1, 5, he chose us in him before the foundation of the world. The us there is not believers. The us there is the church. So what we're saying here is that in a lot of cases in the scriptures, when we see chosen, it's a group like Israel right. or the church. Right. God chose to work through the church or right. revealed himself through the church or he's going to reveal himself to the chosen nation of Israel. Right. And in Israel, even though they were chosen, there were many unbelievers. Oh, absolutely. So you have elect who are unbelievers, individuals. And, of course, at the end of the tribulation, Paul says, then all Israel will be saved. But he doesn't mean saved in the sense of born again. He means all of Israel will be delivered from the Gentiles and will receive the long-promised Old Testament salvation. It's coming. It'll be here before you know it. What am I talking about? The Grace Evangelical Society's National Conference 2024. It will take place May the 20th through the 23rd at Camp Copas, an absolutely beautiful campground in North Texas, right on the lake with lots of recreation, great food, a great place to stay, wonderful fellowship, and wonderful free grace Bible teaching. Information and online registration now at faithalone.org slash events. Come and join us, faithalone.org slash events. Remember Zechariah 9, 9 and 10, the king is coming on a donkey and he's bringing salvation. Well, the salvation he is bringing is he's going to overthrow the rule of the Gentiles and he's going to establish Israel as the dominant nation in the world. And of course, the Jews wrongly thought in the first century that that's what Jesus was offering then. Well, he was, but he had to die first. Right. And they didn't get that. And they rejected him for the most part. Then when the kingdom was reoffered early in the book of Acts, it was rejected again. So the chosen nation had to go into exile until 1948. But in any regard, when you look at all the references to chosen, I would urge Bob and everyone to do a study. Just do a concordance study and look at the word chosen. And you will find that choosing refers to something specific, except in some rare cases. And in those cases where it just mentioned, like to the elect lady, Second John, that's referring to a local church, not an individual, probably. And we're not told elect for what, but it would simply be that these are people chosen to serve God in that region. So what you're saying then is... When you look at the New Testament, the word elect, election, chosen, however the translation may be. There are numbers of different words. Right. There is not a single case where it says a person, individual, is chosen before they are born back in eternity past. And this is the Calvinistic way of understanding it, of either going to heaven or or going to the lake of fire. Good question. There's one verse that seems to say that. Acts 13, 48. Maybe you can turn to that. And it says, as many as were, depending on your translation, appointed to eternal life. That's not the word election, though. right? It's not the word election. It's Tasso or something. Yeah, it's from Tasso. Right. Tetagamenoi, I believe it is. Because it's in the Uh, perfect. Basically, what that word was used, it was a military term for arranging troops in battle. Get in row. Get in your column. And basically what a number of people now say about that verse, why don't you read it, Acts 13, 48. It says, now when the Gentiles heard this, they were glad and glorified the word of the Lord and as many as had been appointed to eternal life believed. Yeah, I think that's not the best translation. A number of commentators suggest it should be something like as many as were open to eternal life believe. Because of the previous reaction of the Jews who were not. Okay, go to verse 46, two verses before. Yeah, Paul is talking to the Jews on the Sabbath, and it says, 
Then Paul and Barnabas grew bold and said, because they preached to them, and the Jews in the synagogue go, nope, we don't want to hear this. Right. And so it says in verse 46 that Paul and Barnabas said to them, it was necessary that the word of God should be spoken to you first, the, the Jewish Jews, people. but since you reject it and judge yourselves unworthy of everlasting life, we turn to the Gentiles. Now, notice Paul doesn't say there, instead of saying God didn't choose you, right, or God rejected you, right, or God considered you unworthy of eternal life. You did it. You did this. Right. And let me point this out to Bob. The opposite is very clear, and that is people can be unwilling to believe. And if that's the case, that shows culpability. That shows God did. It's not a matter of God's choice. For example, John 5, 39 and 40, you search the scriptures, the Old Testament, for in them you think you have eternal life. They looked and they they thought, if I keep these commandments well, if I'm blameless, I'm going to have eternal life. And he says, but these are they which testify of me. But you're not willing to come to me that you may have life. Well, why mention willingness if, if you're chosen and you have if no choice? There, if there's nothing, yeah, it's all just choosing. It, it means nothing. And, of course, you've got Cornelius in Acts chapter 10, and here's a man who is a man of prayer and a man of alms, and an angel is sent to him, and guess what? Here's an unregenerate man, and he hears what the angel tells him, and he sends for Simon Peter. And, of course, according to Calvinism, total depravity means you can't understand anything. Well, also when Jesus weeps over Jerusalem. Right. And he goes, how long I wanted to gather you, but you were... Unwilling. Unwilling. Yeah, Matthew 23, what is that? Uh, I, I can't remember the exact verse, but the end of the chapter there, he says, I would have gathered you, but you were unwilling. The kingdom could have come in the first century. And so, yeah, this idea of election is part of the whole tulip. It's a kind of a right. package and ultimately, the whole thing is based on philosophy. It's not based on the, the Bible. unconditional election. And here in, in Acts thirteen forty eight, these, like you said, appointed, how do we translate that verb, tasso? It's you were, well, the opposite of the Jews. You were willing. You were, It's like you were open to it. You, right. were, you were almost like you appointed yourselves worthy of eternal yeah. life by being willing to listen to the message. You were welcoming it. Right. right. You were receptive to it. You got in line. Yeah. The military yeah. term, you got in line to listen to this message. Right. Well, Bob, that's great. And Bob here and the Bob who asked the question, thank you for sending it in. And in the meantime, keep, keep grace, grace in focus. In focus. Read many from our library of thousands of free magazine and journal articles online at faithalone.org slash resources. That's faithalone.org. Did you miss an episode of Grace in Focus that you really wanted to hear? Just come to faithalone.org. That's faithalone.org. We have all our past episodes right there on the site. Our team is really great about answering questions, comments, and feedback. If you've got some, we hope to hear from you. Let me give you our email address so you can do just that. It's radio at faithalone.org. That's radio at faithalone.org. On the next episode, we talk to a family who attended our national conference this past May 2023. You'll love it. Please join us. And until then, let's keep grace in focus. The proceeding has been a listener-supported ministry from the Grace Evangelical Society.